And the company we about to get into is what's the name of the company? Uh, Vior Transportation. Vilor, V I L O R. No, Vior, V I O R. Vior. Lord have mercy. Yeah. I know. I, I know. I'm going to tear yeah. up that name. <laughs> I'm probably going to say Vilor, Vilor. But it's Vior. It's V I. Yeah, Vior. O R. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. No, no, nigga. You ain't a terrorist. I've been watching you. You have? You ain't watched behind your ears or nothing. But I did. Look at me. I'm going to tear that name up. Let's get into it, man. Will in the building. All right, my man. Uh, you reached out to me via email. You said you had a. Uh, you had a story to tell about a about a company that you uh, drove for. Uh, I read the email. You're a ten year driver, right? Uh, twenty years. Yeah, twenty. Yeah. Oh, twenty years. Okay, my bad. My bad. Twenty years. Okay, so you started. Well, you started in the millennium. So you what between two thousand two thousand one. Yeah, I started, uh, started driving in, in 2000 on the farm, but I didn't, I didn't get my license until 2007. <laughs> oh, you got your license in 2007, but you've been driving yeah. since 2001. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, but you said on the farm. So, on the farm, you, well, you, you really don't need your your CDL doing farm equipment. Yeah, you don't need CDLs out there. Right. As long as you stay within a hundred mile radius, you know, you're good to go. So what what you was doing farm equipment or you was doing or you was still doing trucks? Uh it was trucks, but it was hauling uh, like grain and stuff like that. So let me get this clear now. Let me let me see if I can understand. You don't need your CDL hauling farm products if you stay within how many miles it's a hundred mile radius so if you if you're picking up on the farm and you're delivering just say to a grain hall and it's and they consider that local you don't need a, a cdl life but ain't the truck you driving is 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 you know air and everything i mean air brakes and everything this is true so that would be considered a commercial vehicle, but in that situation, you don't need your CDL. Right, you just need a light. Okay, okay. Where, where's this at? <laughs> uh, <laughs> where, <laughs> it's down in, uh, in Mississippi. Okay, okay. So how i mean well i, I don't want to be no well it's 20 years later so what what you was making down there i mean couldn't be much considering right well see with with that pay by the bushel so a bushel is per pound so just say it's uh 50 cent a bushel and the bushels may be that week may be 54 pounds so how many pounds you got you divide it by that and that's what you get paid Okay, so this is so this is semi truck you driving, right? Okay, but Will though you, so you so you got taught on the farm how to drive or what's what's the deal? Right, right. That's that's what happened. I uh, talked on the phone, so uh, that was no problem. I, I didn't have to do no bagging or everything. Just straight driving, just going forward. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. Um. All right. So, you say you got your CDL in 2017. So you went no, to. Oh, I mean not 2017. My fault. 2007. <laughs> my fault. My fault. My fault. Yeah. Uh, 2007. So you went to school, or you went through a company. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, school uh, through Swift, but I went to a school down here called uh, SEC. It was a three-week program. Went down there and got my license. Went to Swift. Stayed there probably about 
three months and I got on up out of there. All right, so was Swift was the one that was that was going to cover for your license, or was yeah, that they, out of pocket? Yeah, they covered all the uh, no, they covered all, all the expenses. Okay, so, so you, they they paid for school and everything. All right, but since you left three months, so are, are you still are obligate? Well, look, was you obligated? Obligated, yeah. <laughs> was you yeah was you obligated then, to pay the rest of it since you didn't finish out with swift uh that's what the contract said but i've never seen or heard anything about it since then so they must have just swept it up on the table i guess you must have been one of the lucky ones all right so let's yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's fast forward to uh to now um how did you how did you find out about by your trucking and uh and tell us what happened to you since okay well uh, i found them on uh they was on indeed and craigslist so you know i was like okay all right program looked pretty good if um 80 of the load you lease it out um it was depending on the truck year and model or how much the payment was so I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna give him a try. I gave him a call. Uh, you know how how the as you call them the black ops do. Send your license and your medical card, they call you back twenty four, forty eight hours and um they let you know, you know, if you've been approved or not. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna give each guys a try. So I call them, give them uh, all my information and everything, they come back. They were like, All right, you've been approved. They give me uh, the address. When can you get the uh, orientation? Well, I can make it uh, probably next week. So I go up there on a Monday, <clears throat> do orientation. It was like two hour long, just do some paperwork. So when we're in, in, in orientation, you know, you, they, they let you know about the company. So, but when I get there, you know, I started noticing red flags. So it's old Empire Incorporated sign on, on the door. So, okay, is, is, is this the place? So I call them, like, yeah, this is the right place. You know, come on in. All right, you come in. And they're like, uh, all right, so you're here for a chance. Uh, you want to do lease purchase or own a uh, or company? So I'm like, uh, we're going you know, to do lease. So the lease is 80% of the load. 20, they get 20% commission. So we get to sign the paperwork. Paperwork says 88%. I'm like, okay, um, so why are we getting 80% if it's saying 88% on our legal document? Well, it's two programs. I'm like, okay, all right. So what's the difference in the programs? One one has more deductions than the other. I'm like, okay. Well, it's still basically the same. As they finish taking the deductions out. So we get into that, um, finish the paperwork, and they give us another address to go pick up the truck. Go we'll pick out the truck. So we get there, and I get there. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm not all right. They got them with junkyard trucks out here. So I, I go in there and talk to the guy uh, that is doing the assignment of, of the equipment. I'm like, these are all the vehicles you got out here? He said, no, I got a couple in the shop. I'm like, okay, so you know, can let me take those out. So he had uh, 20, 22, and 23 in there. I'm like, okay, so I need something with still got a warranty on. Since we got to pay for out of pocket anything that happens to the truck. So I need warranty. All right. Okay. So I pick out the truck. I get a pretty good truck, twenty-two. Um, got like a hundred thousand miles on, in good in good shape. All right. Do your paperwork, and then they start sending you over the iPads and prepads and all that stuff. Know that that's got you have to set your own account up for that. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, they pretty much what they're doing over there is they set you up. Pretty much, you know, you can come in and get you a truck, no down payment or anything like that. And uh, so you can you pretty much run on your own. You still have a dispatcher and everything, but you can you can find loads your own self and let the dispatcher know. So I'm like, okay, cool. So things we get uh get the rolling. So they give me another address to go pick up the trailer. I got a newer trailer, it's like a 2020. It's in good shape from what I see. You know, good tires, good brakes, and all that stuff right there. Pick it up and uh so. Get the rolling. Get get my first load. First week, smooth, good load, paying good. 
going to the areas of light. I'm like, okay, all right, everything looking pretty good. Put that coffee down. Good dispatch. So second week, same thing. I'm like, okay, all right. I like it over here. So now it's time to get paid because, you know, the first week, they hold in a, in a, year, a week in a hole. So it's going to be two weeks before you get your first paycheck. It's time to get paid now. They suppose they send you the settlement on uh, on Monday, so then you count on Wednesday. All right. So it's Wednesday. I'm like, okay, I don't see anything. I'm going to give it to midnight. Thursday morning, come around. There's no, there's no money in my account. Let me call account. Let me email. Nobody got, I'm just so am. It's supposed to be there. Um, we go check it out, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. Another day go by, still nothing. So I call my dispatch, like, hey, you know, write me to the yard. Let me get a load going to the yard. I get to the yard <clears throat> Friday, still no money. He had no email returns. So I'm like, okay, somebody, something going on here. So I get there, I pull up. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I ain't got paid yet. What y'all got going on? Oh, it's supposed to be in your account. Let me try to get a hold to a county. I'm like, what you mean get a hold to a county? Oh, it's a different company. So, okay, all right. So y'all got three, four different companies into one. So nobody, they don't have an office nowhere nearby. You can't call them direct. I'm like, okay, all right. So I sit there. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. No more product, no more loads, anything. So I get paid. Sit there for the weekend. Monday morning rolls around. See the same thing. No money. Like, where is, okay, what y'all doing? What y'all got going on? Oh, we sent it to the wrong, uh, to the wrong uh, account and they returned it. So I'm like, okay. They were like, call your bank and see if this XYZ happened. I called my bank, emailed my bank. They were like, nothing came across and nothing was returned. Red flags again. Like, all right. Here we go. Because I've, I've been, I've worked for, you know, the, those people a couple of times, not the specific company, but the, uh, say the Russians, Ukrainians, or whatever. And I've never had this problem. So I'm like, all right, all right. Um, what y'all got going on here? Why? Am I, where's my money? So they uh, send me an email. They finally get a hold to a county and payroll. They pay me that money. I'm like, okay, cool. I got my money. So at this time, I'm getting my settlement for the, the last week. Pretty good, pretty good settlement. All right. So when I'm like, I'm asking the question now. So when is that supposed to be the pot? I was supposed to be depositing when see everything that happened last week was, um, you know, just we just had a couple of hiccups. You should be paid on time this week. Should be. All right. I get a load, head out. Wednesday come around, it's no money. Thursday come around, it's no money. All right, here we go again. Go back, I get Riley back up there. Hey, where is my money? Are we, um, it's supposed to be there, X, Y, Z. So we just had this problem last week. You know, I'm not working for free. I can't do it. You know, it, it's not how it's supposed to work. I said, the thing else is, is going fine, but um, I'm not getting paid, so I can't do this. Well, it's supposed to be there, so uh, same process. So now, you know, prior to that, uh, accounting would call, email you, text you, uh, certain information, they respond to you. So, but now there's nothing. There's no emails being returned. There's no phone calls, no texts, or anything of that nature. I'm like, all right. So I go back in the office Monday that Monday morning. Where's my money? Are they supposed to be there? I'm like, okay, all right, I can't do this. You know, uh, we're gonna pay you. We just, uh, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, I was having, I had a trailer. It started eating up um, tires, so they want me. To, they want you to pay for that. I'm like, no, nah, I can't pay for none. Y'all ain't you paying me. We'll pay for it, but we'll take it out your maintenance account. That's cool. But uh, that was like on a Thursday. 
there's nobody in the office you can pay for and we're reimbursing. I'm like, no, you can't reimburse me. Y'all ain't paying me on time. I can't trust it. So, you know, at that, at that time, I just decided to quit. So that was like a month ago. Still haven't got my last two checks, escrow, none of that right there. And uh, so I finally got in contact with the manager. And uh, he was like, well, you know, we've been sued by by a couple of company drivers, a couple of lease drivers, and they frozen out our access. Oh, so I'm not going to get paid. He said, well, we got a court date coming up. They're supposed to release emergency funds, X, Y, Z. And so y'all y'all been doing this the whole time, but you're steady bringing drivers in. When I turned my truck in, they were, um, another guy was getting in as I was getting out of my last settlement paper that they sent me, uh, I think it was like two days ago. Had that and some deductions on there. I'm like, wait a minute. Trailer damage for like two thousand dollars, four tires. So I, I called my manager back. I'm like, hey, what's these deductions? Oh, the driver that uh that you that that picked up the trailer after you did had an accident. So why is it on my stuff? Oh, we're gonna fix it and XYZ. So at that time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna call the Department of Labor and EEOC it as well. So I can get my own, you know, own little thing going on. So, I mean, they just they just running. Up. I don't know what they're doing over there, but they they're closing the doors as right now. Bro, this 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 they 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 running game on you guys, man. What is going on with what what is going on with these black op companies taking advantage of you guys, man? What's up? I, I I don't understand, you know, this because that's my first uh, first run in with you know having an account like that because I worked for them a couple of times before, you know the the blackouts and you know it's everything good they pay good they paying on time you know you got good load this is my first time accounting I'm like no nah, this ain't it right here. All right, so let's unpack this man. Let's start let let's start from the bottom and work our way to the top, man. So how long did it take them to? give you your first settlement uh it really took right around almost four weeks how many it took it took really almost a month before for, i got my first settlement. for your first settlement your first, my first check settlement. you had to wait about a month well we knew about the week in the hole but then you had to right. wait in an, an additional three weeks for your first check, Basically. yeah, because you know, you know, they tell you all right, the first one will be in the hole, and then you wait the week of later to get your check. I'm like, okay, so basically, I'm gonna be two weeks without check. Cool, I can handle that. Three weeks turning. Now we had a month. Where is my money? All right, all my other, all my other funds are gone. I need y'all to pay me. That's how I got going on. Like this ain't this. But at this time, you know, you at this time, you you wasn't you you was holding up before you took another load for them for your first check. Right, right. So after that second week, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm not going anywhere. So y'all pay me. So I saw that everybody now everybody want to call. Oh, we we gonna pay you, and it's coming in. We're going to deposit it on this day. Your bank should release it on this day. I don't care. Not moving one inch, not picking up a load. I'll be sitting right here in front of y'all, though, until I get my check in my hand. So once that happens, I'm like, okay, we can, we can proceed. Will, I'm going to have to give it to you, man. You 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 kind of did it right, bro, because a lot of a lot of other guys, they will be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I'll still run and – and all like that while waiting on the check. But no, I, I, I'm going to have to give it to you, bro. You're like, no, nothing ain't getting moved until I get paid. I feel you. I feel you on that one, man. Right. I can't. I'm not, I'm not driving for free. Because everything else was going good except the maintenance part. But they, they told you beforehand when you sign your contract, once you get the truck and trailer, you know, because you, you're renting the trailer, but you, you're buying the truck. I'm like, okay. But uh, uh, anything after 30 days that you didn't let us know from the beginning is on you. I'm like, cool, all right. I got a pretty, I got a pretty new, new truck, pretty new trailer. Shouldn't have no problems. But the the, the trailer I had um, needed an alignment, so it was eating up tires back. I got to keep paying for tires and tires. Like, wait, wait, wait. I need a new one. 
Y'all need to give me a new trailer. And then I need one with the uh, with the uh, wind guards on the bottom so I can go into California. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? Well, we got you, you know, whenever you come back through, we'll switch out your trailer. All right, but what's I gonna do about these, uh, these ties and stuff? Well, he, you know, you gotta pay for them, and I'm like, okay, cool. I don't have a problem with that, because these are expenses of on the operator. Fine, that's cool, but y'all gotta pay me. So they wanted you to get the tires fixed, but they haven't paid you yet. Right. Something like that. We we can't do that. Something like they were like, okay, we'll take care of the expenses, and um, uh, but that, when you call this, it's nobody in the office. Like, so how how are we supposed to get paid? I mean, how are we supposed to take care of this? Well, uh, you can pay for it, and and uh, we'll reimburse you. I'm like, no, nah, you can't reimburse me. You're not even paying me on time, so I'm not gonna trust that. So I can, I actually got pulled in for a DOT inspection. And um, I had a uh, a nail in my tire, so they changed the, one of the laws in uh, April that uh, if you got a nail in your tire with a audible or touchable leak, that they put you out of service. I was like, okay, this is new. So I called them, let them know, like, hey, um, I'm out of service because of XYZ. Well, you should be able to still roll on it. I said, roll on it? I'm out of service. I can't go anywhere to get fixed. Well, you can call them. I'm not calling anybody. You guys call them. Get them come fix it. Y'all can take it out of my check. I'm fine with that. There's nobody in the office too that can that can take care of that. What 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 do you mean? Well, you guys have you, you got a 24 hour breakdown, but you don't have anybody to pay for it. Like, oh, here we go again. Not gonna deal with it. So they finally, you know, the the next morning get somebody out to come out. And fix it, you know, and I keep on rolling. Okay. All right. All right, man. This this messing yeah, this this messing with the money. Like this this yeah. this messing with the money. I mean, you you having you having trailer issues, you having truck issues, you having trucker issues. You 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 got twenty four hour claim that you got twenty four hour breakdown, but you can't get in contact with nobody to pay for it? That's not twenty four hour right. breakdown. If you can't get in contact with it's nobody not. to pay for it, so now so I'm missing. My, my so now you missing out. You 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 missing out on uh on money because they don't have nobody to uh, pay for it. Where? Okay, okay. Where where is this place? And where is the head office? Because it sounds like. It's at one place and the head office is like clear across the country somewhere. See, that's that's the beauty of it. So they don't have a main office. So you, you come to orientation that's at the safety office. So that's where they do all the safety stuff. All right. You go pick your truck up at some at one of their um the guy, he's supposed to be the head guy. So it says Sunberg Trailer. So that's the guy that does all the equipment and everything else. You have to go there to pick up your truck. And then you have to go to another location to pick up your trailer. There's no accounting department there. On, at, at the main office that we go to at first, only people there are safety. All the maintenance and everything is done at another location. And all your other uh, trailer stuff is done at another location, so they don't have a, a central hub. So you don't have no you you don't have no HR department, no no payroll department, nobody that you can actually go in there and physically talk about uh about your money issues. Right. So that was the problem. I was like, so that's why I pulled up at first. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go in here and somebody will tell me something. There's no, there's no one there. It, it's, they say it's a remote job. It was another company, another entity. I'm like, okay, all right, y'all playing games now. 
So, you know, I do my research and I get the, the, uh, supposedly the owner's numbers. I call it. It's the guy named George. Hey, George. Um, how you doing? Oh, this is safety. Who is this? Hey, hey, man. Um, call him by my check. Blase, blase. Uh, I just handle the safety. We don't, we don't do the accounting here. That's a different office where I can email them and they'll get back to me. Same stuff over and over again. So they ain't emailed you back. They're not emailing me back. It seems like y'all done blackballed me at this point. What y'all got going on? So they have to email this place. Like you, it's, There's no direct phone number that you can call yourself and complain about, you know, about your settlements or anything. You, you have to go through. They have, they have a number. So, so when you call their, their main number, it gives you an option to go to accounting. You can, you can, that, no one never answers the phone. You just leave a message. Like, okay. They, um, you, they had, you got the email to email them and they're actually, you know, when I first started, they text me off a few numbers. Um, and uh, call me for, you know, some information. So I call every one of those numbers back. So I text all those numbers back. Never got a reply. And you found this company on, on Indeed? On Indeed. They're on Indeed, Craigslist, Facebook. They're, they're even on, on Pulse. So wait, so what, so on Indeed, when you came across, what, what was, what was, uh, what was said on Indeed versus how you, how you, how's, how you being treated now in the, in the company? Yeah, it, it was too different. It was totally different, you know, on the, um, on the advertisement. Like I say, we got, we got, um, any kind of equipment you want. From uh, 2017 to 2023, um, low payments, 80% of the low, 20% commission. Uh, it was like 500, uh, 250 a week for escrow, um, 250 a week for the trailer payment. I said, okay, I'll, you know, these these normal prices, cool, all right. Um, you know, it's non force dispatch. You know, like I said, I didn't have a problem out of dispatch. My loads were good. They paid good. I just had a problem getting paid. Okay, okay. This 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 is crazy. Where they where they out of? Or where, out of or where uh, was the where was the hub at? What what was the hub out of? Uh, the hub was out of Bensonville, Illinois, and then they had another hub in Schumburg. Illinois. So the place you went to was Bentonville. Yeah, Bentonville. So, but like I said, they they uh they just had reached out. Okay, and then yeah, after, after that, you go to Sunbird. You go to Sunbird to pick up the check, uh, pick up the truck. Right. Wow. So, so you go know, through my investigation. I found out that that was the guy that was over everything. The, where you go to Schumburg to pick up your, your equipment. That's who's over everything. So I had to finally get in contact with him myself to figure out what's going on. So this company is being uh is being sued and they're going out of business, but at the same time, they still bringing drivers like they're yourself in. Right. I mean, what? I mean, what they? What, I mean, what was the, what what was the idea behind them doing that? What they they was just gonna just fall back up under another name, up under another company? What I mean, what do you think they was trying to do by bringing yeah, new I guys that's, on? That's what was happening. They were bringing new people in, you know, and uh, they were just going to change their name and go up under another company because due to my, you know, when stuff started going south. I did some research, you know, and that's what happened last time. That's how they became Bior, because before they were old Empire Incorporated. They went out of business, and all the kids things over everything, and they made, made it Bior. But it was the same people working. 
Okay, so Empire or New Empire. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Was the one that's going out of business that was being sued and being bankrupt and everything. I guess they behind the scenes probably got somebody else name the cover for, you know, the new name, which is Vior, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and so, what, I, what I noticed again, so, so things were starting to paint, you know, I had to pay attention to him. Like, okay, can't be naive to this. It's not your regular situation. What's really going on? So what I was paying attention to, so I'm getting my rate confirmations. So I took all those and I looked at on the payment on there. If you, they didn't do a quick pay, you know, through a factoring company, the, the payment would be uh, 14 to 18 days. So that's what's going on. You're getting paid when they get paid. Wow. Okay, so... They run in they 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 run in black ops up under another company, Vi Vior. Right. Vior. V O would it V I O R? Right, right. So they run in they run in black ops up under up under a shell name, which is Vior, but the original company name is New I was so old, old Empire. Old Empire. But yet, mm -hmm. Old Empire is the one that's getting sued, and 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 for some odd reason, the company's assets got frozen. Right. So he was, I was like, so I called him. He was like, um, all you know, we've been sued. We're being sued by drivers, and drivers are holding freight and equipment. And we can't, you know, they've frozen all our assets. Department of Labor has came in and DOT and they're making them close the door. So they have a court date on June 2nd that's supposed to let them uh, have access to their emergency funds so they can pay all their drivers off. So I'm like, eh, they they I, sounded like, they, they sounded like, they sounded like victims. Like normal to <laughs> No, they trying to make themselves sound like victims, bro. Like, you're not a victim. Yeah, like, you, you, like, you, 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 you're doing these drivers like trash, man. I mean, oh, well, they, you know, they shut down our, our finances. And we're not able to pay you because you're not paying. You, you're not paying right. the drivers. That's why the drivers are feeling some kind of way. Like, that's why they keeping your trucks. That's why they're not moving no freight because you're not paying them. How you gonna play victim? Exactly. How you gonna play victim to this gentleman right here? Oh well, you know they they shut down our account. You didn't bother to tell me that when I got hired. Exactly. So that, these are the questions that I ask. You know, once I finally talked to, to the head, to the head guy, I'm like, so why didn't you send out a mass, you know, uh, email or text or something to let people know? Well, we still got to try to recover. Um, funds so you know we just keep it but that's wrong you can't do that and then you you wonder why why people are holding your, your equipment why people are holding freight so will man I, I, it, it took you a it, it took you a month to get your first settlement but you haven't got you haven't got your your second or last so i'm assuming you didn't stay there long how how long did you end up staying uh, I, there before you yeah, left I, I was just there a month after the, the last um the last encounter with the same issue i just had right like, now i gotta I, i'm i'm leaving i can't it's not gonna work wow that's that's a crazy ass story bro how okay so since you experienced something like that man how what what kind of advice that you can give anybody that's that's coming across companies like that from indie craigslist and others do your research that's that's all i can say because like i said I, i've been to, to many other companies black ops companies you know i did my research and everything you know 
turned out to be pretty good. But on this particular one, you know, I should have noticed it from the beginning. You couldn't find a review on them. They didn't have a real address. They had a virtual address. And the address that they gave you was an apartment address. I was like, wait a minute. You guys aren't running a company, you know, out of an apartment? What's going on? Like, All right. But, you know, the, the, the talk was pretty good. It matched up to everything else that was going on with pretty much, you know, same offer, same same pay that everybody else is offering. I'm like, okay, all right. So, but just do your research. You know, if you got to look up DOT numbers, MC numbers, you know, try to get in, in contact with, with drivers that work there, you know, do do your diligence and your research so, you know, so those things don't happen to you. Was you able to get in contact with, with any other other drivers that that has driven for the company or dr- uh, drove for the company to to at least get confirmation on on them not getting paid or anything like that. Um, I I didn't. Uh, actually, well, when I was turning my truck in, I was talking to the guy that was getting in the truck, and he was a returning driver. You know, I was, and I was telling him, you know, what was going on while I was leaving. He's like, man, I didn't have these problems, you know, prior to. He had he had he had been gone a month and he came back. I was like, Well, that's what's going on now, you know, and I didn't get a chance to talk to any any I didn't see anybody else. So, you know, that's the only, you know, talking I had to someone that had been there prior to. Wow. So in your humble opinion, you you wouldn't suggest Vior trucking out of Illinois. I would not. It's I mean, like from if if it's the truth, they're shutting down. You know, so it's like why don't go there? You're not going to get paid. So you know, they, they, they even goes for their company drivers. Like the company drivers got turning in their equipment because they can't pay them. They got to go into personal accounts to pay their company drivers. Like nah. This ain't it. Wow. But let me ask you this, though. I mean, let, let me ask you this. And you, you did mention, you said do your research and everything. And you and you did do your research on a company, but you really won't know about the company until you actually go with them, though. I mean. Right, you, right. Cause everybody I mean, the that, research that. The, the research that you was able to get on a company was, was kind of good on an offset. But then when you got with the company, that's where everything started going south. Was you able to choose your own loads or you had a dispatcher that dispatched it at all? Uh, well, they, they, you have a, a dispatcher, but you are allowed to find your own loads. You just can't call the uh, company to book them. You have to uh, let your dispatcher know, you know, this is the load I want and whatever, and they're booking. Like I say, on, on that end, on their um, their dispatching side, you know, the I didn't have a problem. It was it was sweet, you know. The the loads were paying good, you know. It's wherever I want to go. If I call them, like, hey, you know, I want this load. I want to go to this area. It's no problem. I just couldn't get paid. I'm like, okay, it's, it's, I, I can't do it. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, I'm glad that you came on to uh, share your your experience, your testimonies with them. You know, just let the, let people know about these uh, about these companies out here and how they, you know, taking advantage of uh, drivers like yourself, man. That that don't make no sense. It's not cool. I, uh, you know, it's, it is it's getting harder and harder for for drivers to find a good a good clean company to drive for you know whether it's a black right. ops company or a legitimate company man it's it's just getting right, harder right. and harder for you guys because all these companies want to do is just bring you on and just take advantage of you you know let's let's keep bringing them on so we could still try to keep making money but not tell them that our money is being frozen
So I guess the new money that right. y'all that y'all <laughs> bringing in is going into a different account. But y'all not paying the drivers out of that account. Y'all still trying to pay drivers out of that froze account. But all the new money that's coming in is going into a different account. So in other words, like you said, you you taking advantage of these drivers thinking that they're going to keep doing this for free while you turn around keep giving them some bogus excuse. Right, right. That's, I mean, it's, it's horrible, man. The trucking industry as a whole is it, it's going down. You know, you got you got semi-major companies that, that's going out of business. You know, the, the only ones really, you know, that's, that's doing good are, are the, the major, you know, mega companies. But if you if you want to make more, you have to find something else. And those, you know, those are the companies that are at risk right now, you know, due to the market race and everything, how, how this, just how it is. They're, they're going out of business. Yeah, a couple of couple of companies went out of business because of uh because of the market. Um, rates is low. Uh, companies, trucking companies that had like you know a good relationship with 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 their clients, their you know their you know their relationship with their clients is on a decline. Uh, is is harder and harder for these trucking companies to compete with mega carriers. That's that's you know that's taking freight on the low. So yeah, yeah that's, it's, that's a it's, big problem too. It's you know? it's it's, you, it's hitting you hard. You look low and, and somebody come up under you and get it for pennies on the dollar. Like nah, <laughs> yeah, it's hitting. It's hard. getting hard out here. Yeah, it's hitting hard. Will man. Again, thank you very much, bro. I really do appreciate you coming on, telling your story, man. Uh, are you good now, or are you? Uh, or are you? Oh yeah, I'm good now. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I went to the com- I went to the company that I left to go to them. You know, because at that at that time I, I left because of my mileage had dropped down. But I went back to them, and you know, they was a good company. So everything's on the up and up. So I'm, I'm good to go. Drink the coffee; it'll make you feel better. I'm I'm surprised you didn't go postal on them, man. I mean, that's that's the problem you with know, these companies. They the old me, the old me would have, but you know, I have to think about it business wise and future wise. Now, if I go up and cut up and beat these folks' ass or whatever else, you know, it's gonna be a whole nother saban. Just go at them, you know, business wise. That's it, you know, because it ain't working at the end of the day. Yeah, when you when you play with when you play with people's money, man, that's that's something that you don't want to do because you know you you you'll get that right one. It's been it's been a couple of them. It's been a couple of right ones. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been it's a couple happened, of right um, ones. You know the 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 family, uh, Jeremy, uh, the one the the other dude. Like I said, it's been a couple of right ones, but I I, I thought they would probably learn their lesson by now. Man, it it just had uh it was um probably like three weeks ago I seen an article, you know, the same thing had happened to another driver and he well there, he killed that man. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, they 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 messing around getting the right ones, you know, and I again I, I thought they would I thought they would learn their lessons, but they they still trying to they still trying to take advantage of you guys and next thing you know they're gonna come up in there and blow blow something up. <laughs> I don't know, man. man. It is horrible out here. Oh!